Hey all, Bill Bachman here with another lesson blog kind of thing for drumworkout.com. Brought to you with some love from my friends at Vic Firth. This one is called to gap or not to gap. That is the question. What? Yeah, gap or no gap. We're talking about the gap between the thumb and the first finger slash hand. So that guy right there, right? Some people say yes, no. Other people say yes, no. I say yes, yes. It all depends, all right? So really, when people ask me questions about technique, my answer is pretty much always sometimes, maybe, and depends, okay? Because there are too many variables for any absolutes. People who kind of know my teaching, my philosophy, is I'm very wary of absolutes. Um, and the other thing is we go all the way to the east, all the way to the west, technique-wise, and then we have all the options available to us. So you can just make music and not think about these things. So I know that some have thrown out the whole, if you have no gap, that means you're tight, right? And certainly if you're tight, you're not gonna have any gaps anywhere in that hand. It's all just gonna be on lockdown. We don't want that. But that's a dangerous absolute. So dangerous, in fact, that I've had more than a few people come to me for Skype lessons because they have tendonitis because they've been squeezing the heck out of the stick in order to maintain that gap, right? That's no good. Okay, what those people are sort of forgetting to tell you or leaving out is that assumes that you're using a pure second finger fulcrum, so the first finger does nothing and there's a gap there, all right? And that's great for some things sometimes. It all depends. So let's get into when to have a gap and when not to and why. If you check out drumworkout.com, I have a lesson there on the three matched grips which will be really helpful to really fully get this and go beyond, as well as the fulcrum, the first fulcrum versus second finger fulcrum. A lot of that ties in. But here's the main thing. Forget about the gap. It's not about the gap. It's all about the thumb's position, all right? If we check out a German grip, we got wide, flat hand, the thumb is on the side, and here you'll naturally have a gap, all right? Now, this is a very poor grip for finger control and some other things, but if we go all the way to French, suddenly the thumb is on the top of the stick. So now that thumb can put a little bit of downward pressure and the fulcrum is really a matter of the stick pivoting under the thumb, all right? So it's fantastic for finger control. Now in the middle is your American grip. Now American grip, if you had to choose one and run with it for the rest of your days, American grip would be the choice because you get the options of the German grip attributes or the French grip attributes by way of the thumb's position slash gap or no gap, right? But let's talk about the thumb. Let's talk about proactive reality stuff, not just side inconsequential stuff or consequential stuff. Sweet, back on track. All right, so if I have this gap, you know, if I'm playing second finger loose things, comes up, no problem, the stick can go past vertical because the thumb would otherwise be in the way, right? So that is where I'm using, in American grip, the German grip attributes, where the thumb is more on the side. Now, if I squeeze in the fulcrum, what I'm really doing is rolling the thumb up a little bit where now it's functionally a little bit more on the top side of the stick, right? It's not on the top, literally, for French, but functionally, it's operating more in the top where I can push down, okay? So you can be way looser there with that going on. So it's kind of like the more finger control you use, the more you want to borrow that French grip attribute. So if you're playing, let's say, triple beats, right, it's real nice. There's no gap because I put a ceiling on the stick. I've closed the door for the stick to come up there where the fingers don't have as good uh, access to the stick. All right, now, if I'm playing just some big eighth notes, then yes, there'll be a big old gap, because who cares, barely hold the sticks, right? Uh, any sort of molar, any of that stuff, there's gonna be a big old gap, you barely hold the stick. You don't need downward pressure, okay? As soon as you need downward pressure for a downstroke, or any sort of roll, right? That thumb being able to push on top via no gap, you can be so much looser having that thumb on the top side of the stick, right? 
So ultimately, it's the more finger control you need, the more you're gonna want that gap closed slash thumb operating on top of the stick, and the more you want just reboundy big wrist with slower things, just let it all open up and relax because there's no sense on micromanaging and squeezing anything up front, okay? And by the way, when we do this no gap thing, it's not a squeeze it shut. All we're doing is putting a ceiling on the stick with that thumb, right? So it's not tight, it's just about putting that thumb in the position to borrow some of the French grip attributes. So there again, that, that American grip, gap, you're sort of Germanish using those attributes, no gap, you're more on the French side using those attributes. So in the blink of an eye, you can switch that thumb's role to play way more things, way more loosely, way more often. That's a win-win-win. All right, so don't worry about the gap. Focus on that thumb's position, learn both ways because you should be using them both on a pretty regular basis, depending on the vocabulary you are playing. Okay, there you go. Be sure to check out drumworkout.com for a whole lot more detail, the extreme hands makeover, and an endlessly ridiculous amount of workouts where you play along with me as I coach you through a whole lot of stuff. All right, have fun with it. Gap and don't gap, and know when to and why. Excellent.